Hey y'all, it's Andrea with The Cutest Little Thing. Thanks so much for hopping on to watch today's video. If you are new to my channel, thanks so much for stopping by. I hope you like what you see today. And if you've hung out with me before, welcome back. If you love thrift flips, home decor, DIYs, upcycling, and all of the things, then you are at the right place. I love to go thrifting and bring those unwanted items home and make them over and give them new life. All right, let's get started with today's projects. Hey y'all, thanks for joining me for today's project. I have this sort of like a picture frame. Um, I had it in my stash. I haven't had it too long. I thrifted it some time back. So I'm just going in and cleaning it up really well. And as you saw, I just took those little example papers out. And I did decide to remove these little clips, these little clips that are intending to hold a picture in place. And I also threw out the little plastic covers. They were all scratched up and just not able to use those. So I just threw those away. I decided to paint over these little white pieces. I am using DIY's cottage colors in the color crockery. And the DIY cottage colors are an all-in-one paint with the primer and the built-in sealer as well. I did two good coats of this paint. I love the DIY paint. It is an all-natural clay and chalk paint. And that clay is the magic ingredient which gives the paint its uniqueness. I chose these three images. I got a pack of little decoupage papers from Timu. And that's where these are from. I chose the ones that I wanted for this piece. They all go together. The pictures are very similar. And I just, y'all know I love my critters. And I love this bunny and squirrel for the spring season and I also love mushrooms so these were the perfect ones for this piece and I just took my Mod Podge mat and I decoupaged each picture to the little picture holders I just did a nice even coat of that Mod Podge and I took, I couldn't find my little piece of saran wrap, so I did have a little sandwich baggie that I'll stick my paintbrushes in when I'm crafting so they don't dry out. So I just grabbed that and sort of rubbed my images and helped smooth out any wrinkles or creases that tried to form. And I also took my heat tool here and just helped it, give it a dry and helped it adhere to the piece. And that heat also helps smooth out any wrinkles. So this is piece of a grapevine wreath that I had. It was in bad shape, so I just uh, kind of tore it apart. And I'll just keep using little pieces of that wreath for my crafts. So guys, if a wreath form is messed up, don't throw it out because you can still use those grapevine pieces in your crafts. I just wanted to add some natural elements here. So I thought those little sticks would be perfect to kind of place at the bottom of each picture. And then as you see, I have this little greenery ball that I have had in my stash also. It was one that I thrifted. I love the little greenery in there. So I just kind of took it apart and pieced it how I wanted it at the bottom of each picture and just sort of placed it inside of those little sticks, like, you know, just um, to give it a 3D look, so to speak, like there was some greenery growing around each picture. I thought about adding some mushrooms as well because I have some from Hobby Lobby, but I decided just to stick to this and that there was plenty of mushrooms in each picture, but that would have been cute too. I'm also adding some reindeer moss here. I thought it just needed a little something else, um, like a natural element to go, and I just hot glued it on those sticks and around various places. And now I had those little holes to cover up where I took those clips off. So I took some jute string and tied a little bow. 
and hot glue that right over each picture covering that hole and I thought it also added a cute touch. And I did all three bows the same and I cut the jute string to make sure they were the same length on each side. And look how cute that looks. I love it so much. I looked over and saw I had a little squirrel in my stash sitting on my shelf. So I said I have to fix a little basket with a squirrel in it to match this piece. I thought it was perfect. So this is a squirrel I actually got at Dollar Tree last year. And I love him. The color's cute, but I wanted to tone him down a little bit. And since I decided not to use those mushrooms in my picture, I thought I could use them in my basket. And this is that same DIY cottage color in the color crockery that I painted the squirrel. And now I'm going in and painting the tops of those mushrooms. I got these mushrooms from Hobby Lobby in the Valentine section, but I love to use them in various crafts because you can paint them any color you want. And I wanted these to look a bit more natural. So I painted them with the crockery color. While it was still wet, I went and dabbed on the color Moss in the Waverly just to give it an earthy look. And now I'm going in with my Dixie Bells white wax to coat this squirrel. Our paint was completely dry and I went in with my white wax and I decided I wanted to add a bit of brown wax to him as well just to darken him up a bit because squirrels are darker than that in color and I wanted him to look a bit more realistic. So I did go in with this dark wax, but by me using the white wax first, it kept it from grabbing on too strong and being too dark. I let it sit a few minutes and then I wiped the excess back with just a piece of drop cloth scrap that I had. And I also dabbed on, that's the color hazelnut in the Waverly, and I sort of blended that in with that color moss as well. Now I'm taking the end of my paintbrush and just dabbing those little spots back on those mushrooms with the color, I believe this is the color truffle in the Waverly, the brown color. Now time to fill my basket. I wanted to create a base, so I stuck that burlap mesh in there. My squirrel was a bit heavy, so he was kind of sinking down in there, so that's why I used that to raise him up. I added some of that reindeer moss and now to add my mushrooms i was kind of placing them how i wanted them and i did hot glue them in there just so they would be good and secure and nothing would fall out and i just hot glued the bottoms of those mushrooms and stuck those back in there and just a tad of greenery i stuck at the back sort of in the background there using some more of that little styrofoam ball of greenery that I had on hand. And y'all know how I love my blueberries. So I did add a couple of sprigs of those foam blueberries that I make in the back. And I added a little simple burlap bow and tied it on the side of my basket. I just wanted a small, simple bow for this piece. Nothing too overpowering to take away from the cuteness of that little squirrel. I love how it turned out and it matches our picture perfectly. I love how it pairs together. I love these little images that I purchased off of Timu. Let me know what you guys think of this. I think it is absolutely beautiful. Okay, this is a project that in the beginning I had no idea what I was going to do and it ended up turning out beautifully. So this wooden cup here that I showed you, it is something that I have had in my stash forever 
it was wood, the color you see on the inside, and sometime back, I went and I did a whitewash. Well, I wanted to redo it, so as you saw, um, I figured it was good and prepped, so I wanted to do some milk paint and give it a chippy finish. So, I took the color, well, it's Sweet Pickens Milk Paint, and it's the color Window Pane. I mixed it up, and I'm applying a good coat on this cup, and now I'm going in with my heat tool and giving it a good dry because with milk paint, when you apply that heat, that is when your magic happens. When you see all the texture and you begin to see all the chippy goodness. Now, back to this little terracotta plate. I did, as you saw, I first coated it with the color White Swan in the DIY. I let that dry completely, and then I went back in with this same milk paint that I used on the wooden cup. And now I'm going in with my heat tool and giving it a good dry and applying that heat, hoping to get some chippy. So we will see how that does. And I'm sorry my head keeps getting in the way. I went ahead and coated that bottom as well. Just so it would be a completed look. Okay, so now I was going to put these two together somehow, but before I did that, I decided I wanted to go in and do a bit of wet distressing. Unfortunately, I did not get all the chippy that I was hoping to get, so I did go in. Neither of these paints have a built-in sealer, so wet distressing is the perfect alternative here. I didn't want to use sandpaper or not a lot because I didn't want it to be like scratched up and I didn't have a fine grit of sandpaper on hand. So as you can see the look that I got with that wet distressing I thought that looked great and I ended up doing that little terracotta plate the same way. I decided to go on and seal this piece up using Big Top. And here I am wet distressing the little terracotta plate, and I ended up loving the look that I got from this technique. See, as you can see, all that beautiful terracotta peeking out. I decided I wanted to go in with a transfer. This is a transfer I had in my stash. I'm not sure what brand it is or where it came from. But to apply transfer, you just peel your peel it from the white backing, apply it to your piece, and then use your little transfer tool and rub back and forth. And you just want to slowly lift up on that clear film as you go back and forth until your entire transfer is adhered to your piece. And then you just want to take that clear piece and rub over just to be sure you don't have any air bubbles and to be sure it's adhered to your piece completely. And I had to kind of go in and press it in the details of this cup as well. Now, I decided to seal this piece with wax, so I went in with my Dixie Bells. And guys, I'll be honest, I'm not sure if this is clear or white because the clear looks the same as the white. So I'm not sure which one I use there. I think I use clear. Okay, so ready to fill. I decided just to sit it, sit the cup on the little terracotta tray. This is some greenery I grabbed from my local Walmart. And this is that eucalyptus greenery I love. I decided to stick a few pieces of that in there as well. And also stick a little piece on the bottom. I thought it needed a bird nest. Y'all know how I am with my birds and my nest. This is a nest I had in my stash. It must have been from Christmas because it had some glitter on it. So I just took my antique wax in the Waverly and brushed over that nest to hide any glitter that it had on there. And then I glued it to this piece of eucalyptus greenery, and I wanted it to kind of sit in the bottom of that tray. And I did glue my greenery where it would stay in place there in the bottom of my tray.
and I added a little bit of Spanish moss around that greenery just to add a little natural element to it. These are some small wooden beads. I painted white, just some white chalk paint, and I wanted to use these as eggs. And I hot glued those in my nest along with a little piece of reindeer moss with my little eggs on top. I have this bird. I get these little birds off of Amazon. I love them. I didn't even paint him. His yellow and green match this piece perfectly. And I hot glued him right on the rim of that wooden cup. And y'all look how cute this ended up turning out. I love it. And I hope y'all do too. Let me know what you think of this piece. I love when I'm clueless at the beginning of a project and then it just comes together so beautifully and this piece just screams springtime. I love the yellow with the green. Let me know what you think. For our next project, we have this cutting board. I have had this cutting board in my own decor I had chalk painted it white sometime back and done a stencil on it. I was ready to change it up and possibly put it in my booth. So I sanded it completely down on both sides and I'm going in with a DIY's white swan. I did a good full coat, let it dry and I went ahead and I did a second coat. And I want to do this piece reversible, so it's one way on one side and another way on another side. So, you know, you can change it up in your decor. These are IOD stamps. So, I went in and inked up the cow first. Just press him down, get that ink off onto my piece. It was a little bit faded in some spots, so I did go and re-stamp it a second time. I cleaned that up, and now I want to stamp my chicken. And this archival ink I get off of Amazon. If you're watching on YouTube, the, pro the products used will be listed in my description. Now I want to distress this up a bit, so I'm going in with Rust-Oleum's Color Charcoal. And just using a chippy brush and sort of doing a dry brushing technique around the edges. Just to, I wanted to use charcoal because I thought it matched the ink color. And then I just sort of went all over the front of the board just giving it a distressed look. And now I'm ready to seal my piece or seal this side. So I'm going in with a big top to get this all sealed up and protected. Now I'm ready to do the other side. I decided I wanted to go in with these beautiful bird and bee stamps. This is also an IOD stamp. So, I just went in and inked up the entire piece, well, almost the entire piece, just where I knew it would be on the cutting board. And I just stamped that whole piece down. And again, it was a little light, so I re-stamped it a second time. I just inked it up again. I lined it up really well. I'm always nervous when I do this. And I pressed down again. And that time, it was still a little light, but I love that look. I just think it looks um, maybe a little aged where some of the ink is coming off. And I did distress that side as well with my charcoal color and then I sealed it up with Big Top. After that dried, I knew I wanted to add a bow to the farmhouse side. So I just used some burlap strips that I had and tied it together with jute string, oh, and some lace. And then I wanted to add one of those Rusty Crusty Bells. 
I thought that was very fitting for the farmhouse style and I hot glued that to the handle. And I wasn't quite sure if I wanted to do a bow on the other side or not, but I love how this side turned out. I think it's just simple. I love the black and white. And I love how that bow pairs with it, with the burlap. So for the other side, I just decided to embellish with greenery. And I thought that looked beautiful with those birds and bees. Let me know what you guys think of this piece. I love how it's farmhouse on one side and the other side is, I guess we could call that shabby chic. What do you guys think? All right, it's time to see those finished products one more time. We have our cute little three piece picture frame that we made using the Timu images with our matching squirrel basket. That turned out to be the cutest little thing. And then we have this little vase that we made with our wooden cup and terracotta tray. And last but not least, we have our reversible cutting board with a farmhouse theme on one side and flip it around for a shabby chic vibe. I love how each one of these turned out. Let me know your favorite in the comments. As always, thanks so much for watching The Cutest Little Thing. Please like, subscribe, and share around. Thank you all so much for your support and kind words for every video. And I will see you guys on the next one. Have a blessed day.